Let's just pray for a minute before the message. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for everyone that's here. We just pray for your anointing on your word, God, that it would touch our lives, touch our hearts, that you would change us, uh, that you would help me to deliver the message that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our message series in November is called Share Your Faith. Now, last week, Pastor David was here. He spoke on the supreme task of the church. I wasn't here, but I listened to it on our website. And you can do that, too, if you miss. If I'm up to date. Now, I'm up to date. I got a little behind. I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes things get a little hectic. But I'm up to date now. All the messages are there. But he spoke, you know, basically on how should we respond. The elections is over. Some people are happy. Some people are sad. But the... Uh, Supreme task of the church remains the same. It remains to reach the lost. You know, if our man is in, that doesn't mean our nation is in revival. If our man is out, that doesn't mean revival can't happen. And so God wants us to continue to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And that's what we're talking about in this message series. Now this week we have Thanksgiving uh, coming up, as well as the run. But uh, we have Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. I'm still debating. You know, what did I came in last, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll see. <laughs> but we have Thanksgiving coming up this Thursday, and God wants to, to use these special seasons, these special events, to remind us of things in our lives, in our walk with Him. He wants us to use them as opportunities to share our faith. They're kind of natural opportunities where people should at least be thinking about God. And today my message is entitled, Share Your Faith with Thanksgiving. And so we're going to talk about how this holiday of Thanksgiving can give us opportunities for sharing our faith during this week and really all the way through the rest of the year. Our country was founded on biblical principles and it's clear if you read from Genesis through Revelation, giving thanks as part of what God asks us to do. It's found throughout the Bible. Let's look at just one passage or a number of passages in the video. One passage from the book of Psalms. Now the uh, scripture verses are written out in the white page in the middle of your bulletin. And on the back, usually, not every Sunday, but usually we have questions, study questions that are used in the life groups. And you can use those in your personal study. I would recommend that you go through them during the week. It says in Psalm 105, verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Again, sometimes we read scripture and we see scripture as suggestions. But really, this is a command, isn't it? It's give thanks to the Lord. It's not an option for a believer. We are to give thanks to God. And we have so much to be thankful for. And then this passage says we are to pray and we are to make known among the nations what God has done. And that's kind of a connection we're going to look at this morning. That thanksgiving, thanksgiving leads us to tell others of what we're thankful to God for. If we have a heart of thanksgiving to God, we're going to want to share it with other people. You know, when something wonderful happens to you, you just can't wait, right? Say, how many parents are here when you had that first baby or second baby? Did you want to tell everybody else about the wonderful blessing you had? Yeah, you're excited about it. You're thankful to God for it. And a heart of thanksgiving leads us to sharing our faith. Verse 2 tells us to sing praise to God and then what? We're to tell of God's wonderful acts. We're praising God for ourselves, for the things he's done. And then we tell others of the things he's done for us. Now, as I look out over America and believers in America, it seems to me that a whole lot of believers in America have great difficulty in sharing their faith. Look at different polls and people just are getting scared or who knows what. They're just not sharing their faith very much. Why is that? Well, there might be many reasons, but this morning I want us to look at reasons with regard to Thanksgiving. Could it be? that we don't share our faith as much as we should because we really don't have 
hearts of thanksgiving to God. Could it be we don't share our faith as much as we should because we're not thanking God for his wonderful acts, for the things that he's done in our lives? If we don't thank God for what he's done, if we really don't have a heart of thanksgiving on a daily basis, then how will we have the motivation to tell others about how wonderful God is? So what keeps us from giving thanks to God? Do we wake up in the morning giving thanks? Do we give thanks in the middle of the day? Do we give thanks before we go to bed? If not, why not? Are we too busy? Do we forget? Or is it that we really can't think of anything to be thankful for? Maybe deep down we feel we've got so many problems that they kind of outweigh all the things we should be thankful for. Our prayers are filled with help me with this, help me with that, and not a lot of thanksgiving. But should we only give thanks to God when things are going well? Should we not give thanks to God when things are not going so well, no matter what our circumstances are? So today we're going to look at what the Bible has to say about giving thanks in difficult circumstances even when we don't feel like it, and how that can help us to share our faith. We need to understand that life isn't always fair. Life isn't always fair. What I mean by that statement is, life isn't always fair the way we would call it fair. You know, sometimes people do really bad things, and it looks like they're living a pretty good life. You ever... Seen that? You, the people in the news, they do all kinds of stuff, but man, they got money, they got prestige, they have influence. Doesn't seem fair, does it? And then you've got people who are doing the right things, and sometimes it seems like really bad things happen to them. It doesn't seem fair. So let's see if, what the Bible says we as believers can expect in life. Is life always going to be fair? Well, the Bible tells us that believers will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. How many people here want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus? Okay. How many people are going to be persecuted? <laughs> That's what it says. Everyone, no exceptions. That's an astounding verse. If you're striving to live a godly life, if you're striving to do what God wants you to do, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to encounter opposition from the devil, really, whether it's motivating other people or just in the circumstances of life. You are going to be persecuted. Is it fair? Well, not really. You're doing a good thing. You're living a godly life and you're being persecuted. Of course, Jesus was persecuted too, wasn't he? He lived a perfect life, and he was still persecuted. Was it fair? No. Why does it happen? Because as believers, we're in the middle of a war. We're caught between, or we're not caught between. We're in the kingdom of light. God's kingdom and the kingdom of darkness is waging war against us. That's why we're persecuted. That's why Jesus was persecuted. We're in a war, and painted on our backs is a target by Satan. You're marked. You're barked by him and the people that follow his bidding. In a few minutes, we're going to look at what Jesus says we should do when we're persecuted. But the Apostle James tells us that believers are going to face trials. He says in James 1, 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Anybody have a few trials in life? Okay. I don't know if we should... Okay, amen. That's, okay, amen. All right. This verse is addressed to believers, to brothers and sisters. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, or my brothers and sisters. We're going to face trials of many kinds in the course of life. Not just one kind of trial, but all kinds of trials. What is a trial? The Greek word here for trial means a testing or a temptation. A testing or a temptation. A trial is something that, something that challenges us, that God allows into our lives to test us. When we face a trial, he tests us to see how we're going to respond. Now, we're going to talk more about this in the second point, but a trial or test gives the possibility of two responses. 
When we're tested, we can either respond in God's way or we can respond in an ungodly way. And so, whenever there's a trial in our life, we're being tempted to respond in an ungodly way. We don't have to respond in that way, but we're tempted. We need to resist that temptation and respond in a godly way. So what's the most common ungodly way to respond to a trial? Well, we just need to read the Old Testament and identify with the nation of Israel. They went through many trials. And how did they usually respond? Anybody know the answer? They grumbled and complained. And did that make God happy? No. Really bad things happened to them when they grumbled and complained. And so, really, that's what we're tempted to do today as well, aren't we? Trials come into our lives, difficulties, persecutions, many different kinds. We're tempted to grumble and complain about it. Why? Well, we feel like it's not fair. You ever had the thought come into your mind, why me? I don't deserve this. I'm doing the best I can. Why is this happening to me? But this verse says, how should we respond to trials of many kinds? Consider it pure joy. That seems kind of hard, doesn't it? Kind of hard to do. That's not the way most people respond to trials. But we're going to see how we can respond to trials with joy, with rejoicing in a minute. The Bible teaches us that life isn't always fair. So we shouldn't be surprised when these things come into our lives. Life is not always fair in the time that we live on earth. Even believers walking with God, even believers doing the right thing, are going to experience persecution and trials. The Bible tells us it's going to happen. And even though life isn't fair, we can look forward to eternity because eternity is going to be fair. Those that walk with God in this life, those that follow his commands are going to be re rewarded in eternity. They're going to be rewarded in heaven. And that reward is going to last forever. And those who don't follow God, those who do things that are wrong, those that are not believers are going to be punished in eternity in a place called hell, a place without God. And so eternity is going to be fair. And so as we go through life, we shouldn't be surprised when Something blindsides us, something we don't expect when trials come into our lives. God allows those trials, their tests, to see if we're going to respond correctly, to see if our faith is going to grow or we're going to give in to temptation. So don't worry, don't complain, don't grumble, even though life isn't fair. We need to respond to trials God's way. There isn't a single trial that comes into our lives that surprises God. Nothing surprises God. He's, oh, I didn't see that coming. It's not a surprise to God. He's allowed it to come into your life. Every trial, every persecution that happens to us, God has allowed to come into your life. Now, you and I may be surprised. I'm often surprised. <laughs> you know, you wake up one morning, you get a phone call or something happens. Boom, you didn't expect it. It's a trial. It's a difficulty. It's something we have to go through. You know, a month ago, we got a call. My mom had fallen and broken her hip. You know, that just came out of the blue. We didn't expect it, and that has kind of turned our life upside down the last month. But God is with us. If we respond to trials in the right way, God helps us. God is with us. If we respond to trials in the wrong way, not only do we hurt ourselves... But we're going to see in a minute, it negatively impacts our sharing the gospel with others. It negatively impacts people around us when we as believers respond in the wrong way to trials. So how should we respond positively to trials? Well, we should rejoice in the midst of our trials. The Apostle James already told us, consider it joy when you face trials. Let's see what Jesus has to say in Matthew 5. Verse 11, he said, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Did you underline that word blessed? You go through a trial, you say, I'm blessed. That's what Jesus says to do. Then he says, Rejoice and be glad. Underline that. Rejoice and be glad. 
Because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so here Jesus says, when you're persecuted, because of him you are blessed. It may not feel like a blessing, but God's word says you're blessed. And so we need to believe that we're blessed. And if we're blessed, then we should rejoice and be glad, right? Because a blessing is a good thing. Why? Because we have a great reward in heaven awaiting us. Now some trials are momentary in our lives and we overcome them. God delivers us from them. Some trials we may face in life may go on for a very long time. Some trials some people face in life go on for their whole lives. But we know that one day as believers we're going to go to heaven and those trials the testing, the persecution is going to go away. And in its place is a great reward. And that's what we look forward to. That's how, how we can rejoice and be glad. And so in order to respond to trials God's way, we need to look beyond this life, really, and look into eternity. And that's what we as believers need to do more. We need to look to eternity because that's what we're living for. If we live for this life, we're going to be disappointed. If we live for eternity, we're going to be rewarded. Not every trial is persecution, but the same principle applies to trials here. We're blessed when trials come into our lives. We are to rejoice in our trials because a heavenly reward awaits us when we respond in God's way. How else should we respond to trials? Well, we should give thanks at all times. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. It says, be joyful always. Under what circumstances should we be joyful? Always. always. Pray continually. How often should we pray? All the time. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. In what type of circumstances should we give thanks? All circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So this passage gives us three things to do basically all the time. We are to be joyful all the time. Not just in the good times, but in the hard times, in the trials. We're to pray continually, and that means at all times. We are to give thanks in all circumstances. Now I think there's a difference in giving thanks in all circumstances as compared to giving thanks for all circumstances. That's just a little word, but it helps me. Because you see, the origin of many trials and, and um, certain negative circumstances in our life is not God, <clears throat> but Satan. And we don't have time to get into it, but if you read the book of Job, you see that behind Job's trials, behind Job's troubles was Satan. He was the one that really did these things. Now, God allowed them to come into Job's life, but the cause was Satan. And why does God allow them to come into our lives? Because he wants us to grow closer to him as our faith muscle is exercised. He wants us to grow in our faith. And so in the midst of trial, we are to give thanks to God. Thank you, God. I thank you that you're with me in this trial. I thank you that you're going to help me through this trial. I thank you that you're going to help my faith to grow. In this trial, I thank you that through this trial, I'm going to be able to share my faith with others in the midst of this trial and so be a witness for you. Now, that's a little different than thank you, God, that my car just broke down or thank you, God, I have a flat tire. Now, if you want to say it that way, that's fine. It just helps me to give thanks in the circumstance rather than for the negative circumstance itself. And so we give thanks to God, we respond to trials in God's way. So, just think back at some trials that you've had in your life. You get up in the morning and you've got a headache, your nose is running, you've got a cough, your throat hurts. What are you tempted to do? <laughs> Call in sick, right? Yeah. That's okay. We're tempted to grumble and complain. Why me? I don't need this. God, thank you. This didn't surprise you. You're going to help me through it. Maybe I'm going to have a little more time to pray and seek you this morning when I'm here at home. 
You talk to somebody at work, try to share a little bit of the truth of God's word with them, and they react negatively. How do you respond? Do you give thanks to God? We could go on and on. But just think about trials you faced this past week. Did you respond God's way? Or could your response be improved? God wants us to rejoice, to give thanks in the midst of trials. He allows them into our lives. And when we do that, it builds our faith. It draws us closer to God. It allows God to move in our lives to bring us through the trial. Now, when we give thanks to God in the midst of a trial, we're not saying, God, I, I just want to keep this trial in my life forever. It may well be that we're seeking God, we're praying to God to deliver us from the trial, that, that he would heal us if we're physically ill, that he would heal us if we are dealing with emotional issues, or that he would heal relationships, or that he would help us in our finances. We're still seeking him in the midst of the trial, even though we give thanks that he's with us. But we're not grumbling, we're not complaining. And that allows God to move in our lives. But responding to trial, trials in God's way does something else of great importance. And this is really the heart of this message that God gave me. It's, we can impact other people through thanksgiving. Well, so often we just go through life thinking about how things affect us and how we feel. But the truth of the matter is that how you, how I respond to trials is going to affect people around us. Other people notice how you respond to trials. Obviously, the people in your own family notice. The people at work notice. Anybody you have an interaction with is going to notice how you respond to trials. And when we respond to trials in God's way, we, as it were, let our light shine. We show others how a believer really is to act. We are being a faithful witness for the Lord. When something negative happens in your life and, and you rejoice and give thanks to God in that and you let others see, that has an effect on people's lives. When you grumble and complain, hey, that's what everybody does. You're like everybody else. And so we need to refuse to complain. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Again, this is not a suggestion. It's a command. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. And this passage is really the heart of what we're talking about this morning. The natural response to trials is to grumble and complain. It's maybe even to argue with others. You get irritable. When you're complaining and grumbling, you might even argue with other people. It's what unbelievers do when problems come into their lives. As I said before, when you read through the Old Testament, the nation of Israel grumbled and complained about the trials they encountered. And in the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us that this grumbling and complaining that the, old, that the people of Israel did in the Old Testament was a result of a lack of faith. A result of a lack of faith. When we grumble and complain, it demonstrates we do not have faith in God with regard to the trial that we're encountering. Rather than complaining, we're to be thankful, we're to be joyful that God is going to take care of us. That this trial is not the end of the world. He's going to take care of us. He's with us. He's allowed us. He does, he's allowed this trial to come into our lives to make us stronger. So at the end of the trial, we're going to be stronger than we were when we first met the trial. That's God's purpose in the trials he allows into our lives. And this verse tells us this is what children of God do. So that we may become pure, blameless and pure children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and depraved generation. I think that describes our generation today, doesn't it? It's a crooked and depraved generation. And God wants us to shine like stars. You know, how, why does a, a star shine? Can you see the stars in the daytime? 
No. You see the stars the best in the darkest of nights. God wants us to not be like everything else around us. He wants us to shine. And we do that simply without complaining or arguing. Rather than that, we give thanks. We rejoice. We stand out for the Lord as we share our faith. The first part of verse 16, let me read 15 and then go into it. It says, in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Hold out the word of life. Let me just capture the whole thought. It says, if we do everything without complaining, if we do everything without grumbling, if instead we give thanks to God, we're going to shine like stars on a dark night and we're going to be, as it were, holding out the word of life to other people. People are going to notice. People are going to wonder, why are you different? Why aren't you like me? We hold out the word of life as we give thanks. It's an incredibly important way to impact others for Jesus Christ. And we need to learn how to do it, not just in our own minds, not just in our prayer life, but to give thanks out loud so that other people can hear, so that other people know that we're giving thanks to God even in the midst of of a difficulty that we're encountering. Our message as believers is not that become a believer and you're never going to have another trial in your life. Become a believer and everything is going to be rosy. That's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is that when we have trials, God is with us. When we have trials, we can rejoice. When we have trials, we don't need to complain. We don't need to grumble. Because God is with us in them. The story that comes to my mind from the Bible concerning this topic we talked about it I don't know about six months ago was Paul and Silas in prison they were in stocks and chains they've been beaten why were they thrown into prison because they were doing good things they were helping people they were ministering to people they were releasing people from bondage and yet they were persecuted they encountered a trial they were thrown into prison beaten and left there and it was the darkest of nights at midnight they didn't deserve that treatment the natural response would have been to moan to grumble to complain but yet that's not what they did at midnight the other prisoners heard them praying and singing hymns to God Praying and praising God. Giving thanks to God. And what happened? An earthquake came. An earthquake released them. And the end result was the salvation of the jailer and his whole family. The jailer heard them at midnight. When they should have been groaning and complaining. He heard them singing and praying. And it impacted his life and his whole family's life. Responding to the trial with thanksgiving resulted in others being saved. Other lives were eternally impacted through Paul and Silas' thanksgiving. So this thanksgiving, each of us is going through different things. I don't believe there's a single person here that's not encountering at least one trial in your life right now. That's the way life is. And some of you got too many trials to count on your fingers, right? If you could list them all. But God is with us. Some things it's easy to give thanks for. But other things are trials. We're tempted to complain. But today God wants to encourage us. God wants each of us this morning to make a commitment. And saying, God, I want to change the way I'm reacting to trials in my life. Maybe there's one trial that you're really battling. It's very difficult for you. And you've been complaining. You've been worrying. Worrying is another way. Not God's way of responding to a trial. Worrying about what may happen. I have time to go into it, but the Bible tells us, don't worry. Trust God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So God wants you to make a commitment this morning. God, I'm going to respond differently to this trial that I'm facing in my life. I'm going to respond your way. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to give thanks, even maybe if I don't feel like it. And when we obey God's word, our feelings begin to change as well. 
And when we do that, our attitude and, and words will impact others around us. They're going to say, hey, what happened to you? Last week, you were saying this, and now you're doing this. Or maybe you met somebody for the first time and they understand the trial you're going through, but yet you're joyful. It's going to open a door for opportunity to share your faith. People are going to ask, what's different about you? And be prepared to give an answer. That's because of Jesus Christ. 